Hello, everyone. I think I'm live, but I can't tell. I think we have no picture and I'm not sure about volume. Let us see what is happening today. There we go. I think we're good. Yes. Hey everyone, it's Janice Amiro, founder of Janice Inspiring Change Holistic Nutrition. Welcome to Inspiring Change 2021. Um, I, uh, I am alone today. I don't have a guest to interview. And um, because I thought I would take this time uh, once again to talk about something I think is really on everyone's mind right now. And that is, um, is um, getting sick. And with the, the fear of, of maybe going back to work and being um, more around people more and um, with the with the restrictions that have changed in Nova Scotia I thought it would be a good time to to try to to help you realize uh, what it is that you can do for yourself because the um, a lot of us are, are, are afraid to get sick and of course that makes sense and there's so much we can do to support our immune system so I just want to find us here on, um, on my phone in case anyone has a question because um, I can't see questions on Zoom, which is the way I connected here. So let me see if I can find, find us here on Facebook so that if you have any questions, then um, here we go. If you have any questions, I'll just put that right there and hopefully it'll, it'll stay up. My goodness, the, uh, the gadgets that a person needs to uh, do a live Facebook. So, and I'm so grateful to the internet for being able to connect with you because it's so important to stay connected even though it's not face to face. So getting back to my topic today, I wanted to talk about the key steps to staying healthy, keeping a, a healthy immune system this summer, because here we are, it's the um, first couple of days into June. Actually, it's interesting, today is the one year anniversary of the day that um, my husband and I moved back from Qatar to Kentville, Nova Scotia. And um, I said this morning that, uh, you know, we pulled in the driveway around 8.30 in the morning um, it was a really nice, a nice uh, day, but we had, uh, we drove from Montreal with six cats and uh, one dog and we drove all night. So we, uh, we needless to say, we all needed to sleep. So that was a year ago today and, um, and we've settled in nicely and making some friends and getting to go home and see my family and and um, friends in Yarmouth as well, uh, a little, a little bit more regularly, um, and I'm looking forward to that because we are uh, the restrictions have changed and we're we're back uh, back in business. So, like I said, I wanted to talk about what we can do to help our our immune system stay strong, and um, you know we are not. Um, there is so much we can do. We don't, we don't need to just kind of sit in fear and, and, and wait for something bad to happen to us. We can be proactive. Um, it doesn't take away that, that, um, that um, infection that we're all afraid to get, but it does help to do what we can to stay strong. And there is so, so much we can do because um, the body is an amazing machine. You know, I, I think we, we, we know that. Um, some of us have gone through some, some health challenges and um, have seen it for ourselves firsthand, how changing our lifestyles can make a huge difference 
in what we what we um, in how we feel um, in our energy in um, you know the way our body moves and the things we can do now compared to maybe what we couldn't do when we were really sick so for, for myself as an example I was I was um, I faced a debilitating illness a lot of you know this but for those of you who don't know I um, I ended up being very, very sick and I had to quit my job. I was unable to, to work anymore. I worked as a hairstylist teaching. I was a cosmetology instructor. I couldn't lift my arms up long enough to dry my own hair, let alone show my students how to, to do, um, do the work that they had to do. So I had no energy to walk my dogs. I just sat around. I was zonked and I didn't know why and no one could seem to find out those answers. But when I saw an, an alternative practitioner, they were able to determine the answers really, really quickly and, and, and diagnose uh, what I had going on. So I decided to make some changes to my diet and voila, it, uh, it worked. And um, now I feel better than I ever did even before. I was only hoping to go back to normal and I thought, wouldn't it be great to go back to normal? Um, but I never really realized how good the body's meant to feel when you give it what it needs. So, so when it comes to um, the immune system and, and keeping the immune system strong, what we have, um, we have so much power because the immune system is, um, is, is what protects us against illness and disease, harmful invaders, you, you've heard that term, I'm sure. And it's not just one thing we can do, it's, it's several things we can do. And so I have broken it down into five, five key uh, strategies or five key things that you can look at assess what it is that you're doing and see if there's an opportunity for change there because all of these steps can help you uh, keep your immune system stronger and when it's like an army you know you've got you've got an army that's 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 fighting and um, if the if everyone in the army is very very strong then you're going to have a better better outcome and so um, with with all of these steps that I'm going to talk about, then there's an opportunity there for you to say, oh, well, maybe I could make that change there. Maybe I could do this. Um, that's a good idea. I didn't know about that. So this is my, my goal today is to share this kind, of, this kind of information with you. And some of it you may already know, but have forgotten and you think, oh, thank you for the reminder. And I do welcome your questions. Um, I have, um, I have Facebook up here. So if you do have questions, then I can, uh, I can answer them for you. So, so what is it that the body, uh, what key components is it that the body needs to, to what, who do we need? What do we need to address in order to, to stay as healthy as possible? I have uh, Monique saying, uh, is watching. Hi, Monique, it's nice to see you. Um, so the key strategies, the first one is to eat right. And what is eating right? What is eating a balanced diet? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And um, I posted something this morning that, that said, you know, if you eat food made from a plant, then that's good. If you eat food made in a plant, that's not so good. And so that is um, a simple, simple step that, um, that we can think of when you think about food that's made from plants, then that is what nature has provided. And that's what we, we should be eating. Food made in a plant means that it's full of chemicals that it's not fresh food, that it has additives in it. Um, the components of the food tend to, to have less nutrients in it because it's been heated, it's been mixed with chemicals, it's, uh, it's been altered in some way. So while it's a very, very simple statement, it is harder and harder for us to eat, um, to not eat processed food. It can be done. And, um, and we have to look at how much processed food 
a person actually eats because if you eat 75 or 80 percent whole food then that's wonderful and a little bit of not the not so good food but if it's the opposite which is sadly the way most people are eating nowadays the standard american diet it is um, by and large 80 or more percent processed food and so when you eat that much processed food, everything comes from a package or a box or a can, you're not getting nutrients. So that's one of the strategies is to eat well. The next one is to exercise. And I think we, we know we, we need to move our bodies. We feel better when we're moving our bodies. So we'll touch on that a little bit too. Um, one thing that is really important and that is um, something that has that we have experienced more of in the last year, and that is stress. And that that is such a you know it's 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 a short little word, but boy, it really can make an impact on our health. And when we're stressed, our immune system is compromised. So I'll go over some stress management techniques for you and things that you can do because no matter where we are in our lives, there's always going to be stress. It doesn't matter what it is, there's going to be something. And it's the way we manage it that helps us get through it and helps keep our bodies stronger. Another or the fourth thing that, um, that I want to touch on today is the importance of getting good sleep, good quality sleep. That's the time that the body is rejuvenating and detoxing and, 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 and trying to uh, process everything that we do to our bodies all day long. So if we're not getting good sleep, then the body isn't able to do that. And that catches up with us. You know, if you miss a night's sleep or you have a poor night's sleep, you don't feel very well the next day. And day after day after day of that type of sleep um, catches up with us and our immune system is weaker. There are some supplements too that can help us and um, help keep uh, our body functioning well and help support the immune system. And I will touch a little bit on those as well. So, and again, if you have any questions, please come along uh, and, um, and, uh, and ask because um, this is a time that you can just shout out your questions and, um, and we can go through them. I can give you my answers or um, if I can't answer the, your question, then I will make sure that I find out the answer and, and get back to you. So I was going to try to share my screen, but I don't think I can do it. So I'm going to just go over some foods that are important when we're looking at eating healthy. And you've probably heard the term nutrient dense, and uh, maybe you don't know what that means, but a nutrient dense food is, and I can go back to um, if you eat food that's made from a plant, that's good. If you eat food mostly made in a plant, not so good. I can go right back to that simple statement. Um, food made in a plant is void, devoid of nutrients. There's, there's very little in it. So nutrient dense food is, is food that has a lot of nutrients in it, that, that has the components in it that the body needs. So vitamins, minerals, um, essential fatty acids, all of the phytoestrogens, all of those things that the body needs on a daily basis in order to heal, um, keep strong, fight off infection, help support sleep, help support stress. Nutrient dense food does that. So when we look at, let's say, let's give a comparison to, to um, um, how about nuts? So nuts have lots of good nutrients in them. Um, you know, maybe you're allergic to a couple of them, but regardless, the, the nuts have lots of nutrients in them. So um, as opposed to, let's say, white bread, um, very few nutrients, any of the nutrients that 
are in that product are added back in, in the processing. And so they are chemicals. So the nutrients in a natural food, the body knows how to take in, digest, break down and use. And so the nutrient dense foods are the ones that we need to focus on in order to be healthy. The, the, the junk food and the packaged food and all those things in crinkly bags that I used to love to eat so much of, not any nutrients in those foods. It's, it's actually, the, it's anti-nutrient is what those foods are. So for example, um, essential fatty acids, we need those in our body. They support our brain health. They support detoxification. There's lots of, there's lots of evidence to show that. They support uh, good um, digestion. So essential fatty acids in natural foods would be chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, hemp, flax, um, raw nuts and seeds are very high in essential fatty acids. Um, avocado, of course, has uh, essential fatty acids um, and those types of foods, very nutrient dense, good for the body. Vitamin A rich foods, um, would be sweet potatoes, carrots, tuna, squash, spinach, leafy greens, those types of things. Uh, vitamin C, which is, is, some, is a supplement I wanted to talk a little bit about. Very, very good as an, it's an antioxidant, uh, a very, very uh, supportive antioxidant, very powerful. And so um, eating your vitamin C would come in the form of citrus fruits, carrots, kiwi, bell peppers, um, strawberries, broccoli, cabbage, those types of foods. Vitamin E, also really important for overall health, avocados, sunflower seeds, walnut, walnuts, uh, mangoes. And um, these are nutrients that will help support the immune system. The immune system thrives on these types of foods and eaten in their whole state, as opposed to a vitamin, is the best way to do it if you can. Like I said, when, you're, when these foods um, have the components in them that the body knows how to accept, break down, and use those nutrients. So vitamin D, very important nowadays, uh, always, but um, you know, even if we live in a sunny, sunny environment, um, it's shown that we're all vitamin D deficient. So some, some support is important. And sometimes it's a little bit harder to get vitamin D from, from food. Of course, the sun is a good place to get some vitamin D 20 minutes a day. And, um, and then perhaps uh, some supplements for vitamin D. But mushrooms have vitamin D in them, as do plant-based milks that are fortified with vitamin D. So there's um, uh, a, strong, a strong evidence to show that zinc supports the immune system. And beans and legumes are a good source of, of um, zinc vegetables, sesame seeds, cashews, um, various nuts and seeds all have lots of um, zinc in them. So, so if you're eating some of these foods on a regular basis, that's really, really wonderful. If you're not, and there's some foods that I've mentioned that you think, oh yeah, I think I like those. I haven't had them for a while, you know, then put them on your grocery list because you, um, you can start, if there's foods that you like that you're not eating, start adding them to your daily intake. And, um, and that's an easy thing to do. You can start feeling better right away. Um, and nourishing your body to, uh, to build your defenses. Some herbs and spices that are really beneficial to support the immune system. Of course, you know about turmeric. A lot of people are taking that or curcumin, um, which is in turmeric. And um, a lot of people are, are adding turmeric to their food and, um, and, and also taking some supplements to, to give them some added anti-inflammatory uh, protection. So, so that is one way to increase your 
your reduce inflammation, which is generally at the root of why your immune system wouldn't be working or would be weaker. Ginger is also very powerful. Cinnamon um, is another one. I eat about a half teaspoon or more of cinnamon every day. It also helps uh, keep your blood uh, sugar in check. So that's, that's very helpful. Um, and, um, and garlic, if you like garlic, eat garlic and onions. Eat lots, although lo onions, not an herb, but um, garlic is, uh, and onions are so good for fighting off um, harmful invaders, so good for virus protection, for bacterial invasion. So garlic and onions, raw or cooked, any way you can get them, get them in. This, this uh, fall, last fall, we, we ordered some garlic from one of the local um, farmers and she asked us how much we wanted and, and I think we got like 150 uh, bulbs of garlic. I can't really remember how many, but the, the woman said, you can't be, it can't be possible that you're going to eat all of that garlic. And we said, oh yeah. And we ran out and there's only two of us most of the time. And we ran out uh, probably a month and a half ago. So I love garlic. I use it in everything and we roast it and eat it right out of the, uh, right out of the oven. So um, any which way you can get garlic in you, then, then do that. Cloves, black pepper, cayenne pepper, those are really good for, um, for the immune system. And some of the more common herbs that we might use in our cooking, like um, rosemary, so delicious, basil, peppermint, um, and that one that people love to hate or, 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 uh, or not because it's, it's um, some people have this, this real aversion to, but cilantro, so beneficial for the immune system and for helping to detox. So those are some herbs and spices that if you have around the house, then um, by all means start using them. Maybe you want to start growing a few herbs on your windowsills, perfect time to do that. And um, some of my clients have said that they're, they're getting some uh, really good growth on theirs right now. So there's uh, all kinds of ways, fresh, dried, whatever you can, whatever you can do, just add some of these to your, to your repertoire. Um, we also, I'm just looking at my notes here. We also have uh, phytoestrogens or phytonutrients, sorry. And um, anti-inflammatory phytonutrients are really, really important to help keep the immune system strong. And those foods would be tomatoes, eggplant, broccoli, peppers, um, Brussels sprouts, kale, um, and I've got some kale growing. I ate my own kale all winter. It was really fantastic. I don't know if you've seen, you've seen my, um, my kale, but uh, let me see if I can show you. Um, where am I here? Uh, where am I here? There's my tower garden. And um, yeah, I'm eating kale and there's some spinach there and also some uh, parsley. I've got some celery growing. It's awesome. And there, I'll get my phone all set up. So other, other um, anti-inflammatory uh, phytonutrient type foods are apples, avocados, cherries, um, cauliflower, pineapple, papaya, citrus fruits. Those are all phytonutrients uh, that help support the body. One of the things that um, when it comes to, to food and um, as opposed to supplements is probiotic and prebiotic foods. And so probiotics and prebiotics help support the gut. And, you know, our health is really in our gut. If our gut is, um, is imbalanced, if there's too much bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria, then the gut 
you probably know you probably know that if 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 your gut is imbalanced you probably have lots of signs that it is um so keeping the the the, the good bacteria in check and and plentiful is um is the reason we take probiotics and eat probiotic and prebiotic foods so some prebiotic foods would be mushroom, Jerusalem artichoke, flax, chia, almonds, broccoli, um, <laughs> and there are those dandelion greens again. Um, they, um, they may be a little bit uh, tart, um, but they are really, really good for you. And um, bananas, asparagus, there's so many prebiotic foods out there that um, that we have access to that maybe you didn't even know were, were beneficial for the immune system. So if those are foods you like, then eat more of those. Apples, pears, lemons, limes, um, oranges, grapefruit, those are good. Um, help support the good bacteria in your gut. And of course, hello, there's a couple more people watching. Joss LeBlanc, hi. And Ibrahim, hi, thanks for joining. Um, so cultured vegetables and something that maybe you've heard about, maybe you haven't, uh, would like to know a little bit more. So we're looking at miso there. Um, you maybe have heard of miso, it's a paste and it, it adds some nice flavor to foods. It's used often in Asian cooking, um, but you can use it in any type of food. Um, Kimchi um, is a good uh, cultured vegetable, sauerkraut, those types of things. You'll notice now when you start going to the markets that there's a lot of people with, with making uh, kimchi and their own sauerkraut. Um, another one is called curtido. It's the same kind of combination, but the flavors are a little bit different. And um, try some of that and those are all really, really good prebiotics that you can start to add to your diet. And you don't need to eat a plate full. It's just, you know, a couple tablespoons or, you know, uh, a, a big bite every day adds to uh, building the strong, healthy, uh, good bacteria in, in your gut. Um, so just a couple more things about food and um, touching to legumes and grains because they do have some support for the immune system. They actually um, are good for getting, um, they help, they have high, a lot of fiber in them. They have some, they're nutrient dense, lots of B vitamins and lots of, of minerals. And so um, they, uh, the more fiber you have in your body, or in your diet, then the more you're going to um, eliminate the toxins because what happens, fiber attaches itself to the toxins in the body. And it's kind of like a Swiffer broom um, where you, you put the, you know, the new little sheet on your Swiffer and you move it all around the house. And when you pick it up, you can see everything that was on the floor has been collected. Um, in my house, it's cat and dog hair, that's for sure. And so what you get when you eat fiber is all of these, these the, the fibers picking up toxins as it goes through the system. And so that's a, a good way to help support detox. And sadly, in today's world, with a lot of us eating that standard American diet, food made from a plant, from, from in a plant, not food made from a plant. Um, that is um, the, the, the amount of fiber in the standard American diet is about 5% of what we should be getting, which is, is, is minuscule. So just adding fiber to your diet can make a huge difference in, um, in how you're feeling. It can help it can make the difference between, you know, if you suffer with constipation and diarrhea, then um, adding fiber is going to help normalize that no matter which way you're going. Um, and of course, water is important too. If you're suffering with, with heartburn, um, with fatigue, 
with um, brain fog, adding fiber to your diet can make a big difference. Actually, when uh, diabetics um, tend to not eat enough fiber and uh, it can bring your blood, blood sugar down when you add fiber. Also, um, those who have high blood pressure and high cholesterol uh, will see a, a really big shift when they start adding fiber to their diet. So fiber really is so important. So that's um, my um, touching on the, the diet and, and what types of foods are good for the immune system. Um, so I'll touch a little bit about exercise. And um, we already, I already mentioned that, you know, we feel better when we exercise. We, we know that. And right now, of course, uh, we're well into spring. Um, it's so nice out. We can get out and walk. Um, it's warmer. The sun's shining. So it, there's no excuse now to get out and, and exercise. But on the days that you can't go outdoors, there's so much you can do indoors. Um, one of the good things about, about uh, the last year or so, a lot of our yoga centers and gyms and uh, people we, we, you know, places we go to do exercise have supported us online. So while it's not like being in the gym or, you know, being on your mat in, in at the yoga center, um, you can still move your body indoors and um, exercise improves your circulation and that helps protect or or support the immune system. So walking, biking, running, swimming, playing a sport. I was out on my new um, off-road bike yesterday. Uh, what do you call it? Um, I went on the trail with, um, with like a hybrid type of bike and it, it felt awesome. And uh, so those are the things that you can get out and do and, you know, move your body find, um, find some, someone that perhaps will commit to walking with you. Maybe there's a group in your area that walks and you can join them. Um, or it's just one person, find somebody who, who you can commit, uh, some time to that will, uh, support you when you're, when you're thinking, oh, I don't feel like it today. Then if you've committed to it, then that's usually the way to, uh, to get you out there. The same with online, you know, if you um, pay for some sessions, then you're more likely to put the time aside and do it. So it's really important to move your body and uh, keep it going all the time, all year long, because that is, they say, which leads me to our, my next topic, they say that that exercise is nature's antidepressant. And over the last year, more than that now, our stress has been really, really high. So one simple thing that you can do to manage stress is get out and exercise. Find time in your day to get out and exercise. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big workout. It doesn't have to be um, fancy gear, fancy equipment. It's just, you know, a pair of runners and you're out the door, just a walk really, really good for your body and for your mental health. So getting into stress, um, then how do we manage stress? And like I said before, stress is going to be part of our lives from the moment we realize, you know, we're stressed when we're babies, we're hungry, and we're looking for food. So stress is going to be with us all our lives. That's just the way it is. But it's how we manage it that helps, that can get us through some really, really tough times. So when you're looking at uh, building the immune system and um, stress plays a key role in, in, in keeping the immune, immune system strong. So if you're working from home and you're, you're finding it really chaotic, then it's important to get organized and uh, plan for that hectic type of schedule so that you won't get overwhelmed. And yes, it can take a little bit of extra time, but it'll be worth it on the other side when you feel so much better having pre-planned 
um, you know, maybe pre-planning your meals, doing a little meal prepping that can take a lot of stress off, off a household for sure. Um, right now with the stress that we're under, I think that, you know, I think it's important that we realize that we're not alone. And I think that some of us don't like to share how we're feeling, but actually if you are very stressed it's important to share how you're feeling um you don't have to share your problems with the world but uh find somebody that you can share your feelings with that will listen and support you um and you will find that that is very very helpful i see denise is online hi denise um right now a lot of people are getting into some type of meditation practice or mindfulness sessions. And those um, five minutes of meditation can really make a difference in the, the amount of stress you're facing. Um, maybe you can do much more than five minutes. But I've mentioned before when speaking online that you know, there's, there's so many, uh, you just Google five minute meditation, 15 minute meditation, you're going to find something that will resonate with you that you can do that is simple. And if you do it daily, you know, maybe it's the same time of day every day, maybe it's when the kids go to bed, or, you know, before you have a bath or after you have a bath at night or, or in the morning when you're the only one up and, um, and there's a bit of quiet time, find some time in your day. Um, if you're working and you and you, you want to take a little break, just get your headphones, put in your meditation and do that on on a break. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. And doing that just a little bit of time each day is huge. Hello, Bruce. And Andrea, nice for you to, nice to see you. Meditation, Andrea says meditation works for me, makes a huge difference. Well, thank you for backing me up on that one, Andrea, because it's, it's so true. It does make a huge, huge difference. And, um, and, and you find that you don't worry about the same things anymore. So um, yeah, give it a try. It, it, you know, I think, I think that some people think, oh, that's just silly. It's kind of hokey. It's, um, it's not really going to work for me. It's, it'll work for other people, but I'm okay. But um, try it and see. It really does make a difference. Um, moving your body. We talked about exercise, but dancing and singing and listening to music and laughing. So important. Um, someone was mentioning to me the other day that they do sacred dance. I think it was um, Sandra. I don't know if Sandra's on here. Hi, Dawn. Um, and um, if, you, if you're in the Armouth area, uh, you can contact Sherry Sim. She offers sacred dance uh, sessions. So she's, uh, she's amazing. So uh, get in touch with Sherry. Um, finding time to do something you like is really something special because so many of us are working too much and we are you know have have commitments whatever they are kids spouses you know maybe taking care of parents whatever and um but finding some time for you and for 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 doing something that you really like a hobby or, you know, maybe it's gardening right now because I know I see people out um, planting flowers and doing that. Whatever it is that you really like, find time to do it. Um, it really does help shift your mind away from your problems. Doesn't make them go away, but while you're focused on that, um, you maybe can forget for a little while, or you can kind of start rethinking about how you might address that problem. And you might even start problem solving when you, when you kind of check out and do something else. So very, very valuable. Um, yeah, so those are the things that I want to talk about when it comes to stress, because um, again, stress is really high right now. Oh, and the, the last thing I was just thinking that um, I was reminded to say was um, just try 
if you're one of those people who watches the news all the time, consider watching less news. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't do that. I need to know what's going on. But there's only so much we need to know about. Um, we don't need to fill our heads full of, of fear and, 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 and anxiety um, over and above what's already happening to us. So, you know, anyone who talks about in all the research that I've read and, and people I've listened to, they all suggest disconnecting from the news. Because if there's something you really need to know, you'll find out, you'll know. But when it comes to that uh, repetitive kind of, you know, all the, the depressed things that we see on the news, it's not healthy for us. It really, really isn't. And, you know, if you wake up happy in the morning, you, you, you get your breakfast, you, you, you know, maybe you sit down, have breakfast and turn on the TV or put your, you know, open your computer and have a look at what's going on in the world. It can change your, your, your mood for the rest of the day. So when you think about the fact that you're already feeling great, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to add um, kind of like that doom and gloom over your body for the rest of the day? So maybe it's a bit of an experiment you can try with, with watching less news to see what can happen and see what your outlook is like. I don't know about you, but I can hear my cat crying at the door. So... I apologize for that. Um, that would be Fanny. She's, she's a very needy cat. So um, I just want to touch on sleep and, um, and supplements are the, uh, the last two things I want to talk about. And, um, and what time is it? It's already quarter to one. Oh my goodness. So, so sleep is key in order to have the body repair itself, the immune system needs sleep to repair and regenerate. So it's, um, you know, one of the things talking about stress is that if you're going to bed stressed, you might not sleep because you're so stressed, your mind is working. So of course, managing your stress is going to help you sleep better. It's important to try to get seven or eight hours of sleep a night. That's what your body needs in order to do the work that it does so that you can be stronger, so that your immune system, all your body systems can be stronger. So it's important to um, sleep in a dark place. If you're having trouble sleeping, make your room as dark as possible and make it quiet. Um, don't have any, um, you know, if there's a clock that's going tick, 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 tick right by your ear, maybe get rid of it. Um, and keep the room really, really dark. Those blackout curtains have, have really helped a lot of people because they keep the room uh, super, super dark, which will encourage better sleep. Of course, don't eat late at night. And for a lot of us, avoiding caffeine um, in the afternoon and evening will help get better sleep. Some people don't seem to be affected by that, but I know a lot of people who are. So consider, um, you know, avoiding teas and coffees that, uh, that have caffeine. And, you know, maybe you're not a tea or coffee drinker, but you eat a lot of chocolate. And maybe that's at nighttime. So consider how much caffeine you might be getting or where it might be coming from, um, especially when it's more close to bedtime. Some people you wear earplugs to sleep. I do. I have for years, and um, and others uh, also wear a mask so that um, if they can't make their room dark, then they have um, you know some protection there. So maybe that's something that can help you um, if you're not sleeping so well. Uh, disconnect from from the gadgets, from the from the phones. Um, don't spend the last two hours of your night um, scrolling Facebook and getting getting uh, all those radiation waves, uh, EMFs around you, and um, that start to quiet down your mind and your eyes um, earlier in the evening, and that will help you get some some better sleep too. Um, and so supplements is the last thing I wanted to go over. Um, now, 
When it comes to supplements, there's a lot of things we can do. I don't recommend starting a whole pile of supplements um, without being under someone's supervision. And so I don't think it's a good idea to be taking, you know, mitfuls of, of supplements. So, but there are some key ones that are going to help support the immune system. I've talked already about vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc. Um, those are really, really important. And vitamin D particularly is, is not easy to get with food, whether you're vegan or not vegan. So that might be one, um, it'd be good to know what your vitamin D level is and to support it. And I was listening to a doctor the other day talk about it, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, I don't know if, if you've heard of her. And she said, you know, um, it's, it's not enough to just be kind of on the norm with vitamin D because it does help our stress, uh, help us manage our stress. Um, so you want to have your vitamin D at an optimal level. So maybe learn what that, uh, how, what your level is, and then start to, to take uh, a little bit of support for that. Um, chlorella and spirulina are really good for the immune system because they help detox. And elderberry, echinacea, astragalus, um, garlic, and those types of, of um, supplements can help you as well. So um, these are the things that daily, if you can't get them in your food, it's worth exploring whether or not you should start to take something. But again, I don't recommend starting uh, a whole, going to the, you know, to the pharmacy or to the health food store, stocking up on a whole bunch of supplements. It does depend on your medication, what you're already taking and how your diet is. So if anyone wants support with that, if, they, if they're wondering what they should take, and um, by all means, I can, I can have a chat with you because if um, it really does depend on what your diet is like, what your lifestyle is like, and then finding the right support for you because not everyone should be doing the exact same thing. So, so if there, I'm wondering if there's any questions for, for, from anyone here, I don't see any. As you know, the immune system is what gives us that, that power to fight off the invaders, like I started saying in the very beginning. And so when it comes to what you can do to support the immune system, I've given you a, a whole list of things, how you can support with food and the difference between those toxic foods made in a plant as opposed to foods made from plants. And those are going to support your system so much better. Um, getting really, really good sleep is going to help support your immune system as is starting to get some exercise and, um, and doing some meditation and some anti-stress type of practices that will get you on the right road because your immune, you have the power to take your immune system to the next level and, and give it that, uh, be really, really strong, build that really strong defense. It's like this, this shield that will help protect you. Um, there's no guarantee that what can happen to us and um, no, we can, but we can do so much to help prevent or help protect against these bacterial invaders. And if we do get sick, then if our bodies are strong and somehow one of those little invaders gets in, then we are better equipped to fight it off. So it's twofold. It's, it's keeping the immune system really, really strong in hopes of, you know, putting up that wall so that when the, when the, 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 the darts come through, they won't get through. And if by chance you do get one of those um, harmful invaders coming in, your body will be able to fight it off, no problem. 
that is why we have our, our amazing bodies that are built to, to keep us strong. We just have to give it what it needs. And, um, and these five key strategies will help to keep you safe and healthy all summer long, all year long. And that is my, uh, my, I've been talking nonstop for 50 minutes. So I'm going to um, sign off. I hope that you've enjoyed this information today and um, you'll be able to implement some things that will, uh, that you didn't know about or you forgot about that I brought up that will help keep you strong and healthy. And I wish you a very happy and healthy day and summer. This is Janice. Bye for now.